What's up everyone, it's an Ive Sai here and today I'm going to be doing a video talking about this Paramilitary 2. This is like the newest version of the PM2 and um, it's in a crew, a crew wear blade with this natural micarta handle. And um, this is different from the original version of the PM2, not very different, um, but basically what they did is they put in these full metal liners here as you can see. So these, they just have these, um, it's milled out on the inside of the G10 scale and they put liners uh, like nested in there. This one is full metal liners. And the reasoning behind it is that they can use different materials for these like micarta uh, materials that are more fragile. I guess with these nested liners, they probably need to be more durable. And I guess micarta is not strong or maybe it's too much of a risk to have that with in within areas and it also uh one thing that comes to mind is wood uh, material kind of like a diamond wood like we've seen benchmade use uh you'll see some of those knives i don't know if they had issues with the crooked river but i know one benchmade it's like i'll frequently pretty frequently see some of those wood scales broken just because when wood is thin it tends to snap so maybe we'll be seeing some wood for these handle materials in the future I'm not sure, um, but it is cool. I like that it shows Spyderco is paying attention. You know, usually I don't feel like, I, this is honestly unexpected for me because I don't, they hadn't touched the PM2 in such a long time. I didn't think that they would do a CQI kind of thing on it. Last thing they did was like kind of change the plunge grind, I'm pretty sure. Uh, but anyway, I'm also going to be kind of reviewing this. I've already reviewed the PM2 a couple of times on my channel, um, but I've carried it again. And basically, I'm just going to say my updated thoughts on it because, you know, I felt like doing a video on it. So let's talk about the looks of this knife. I really like how this uh, natural micarta looks. My light is, they make it look pretty, like, my light's pretty bright. So it looks pretty I don't know, like aggressive, I guess, but it is darkened a little bit up here. I don't know if, cause maybe I am, I almost dropped it. I'm holding it more like this in use. I don't know, um, but it looks good. It's going to kind of darken over time and I like it. It also feels really good. Um, so I like that about it. Basic looking paramilitary too, you know, not the coolest looking knife design ever, uh, but overall I like the looks of the handle scales. Um, Let's talk about the blade for this. So crew wear on the blade steel. My first knife in crew wear was this pair three, the knife I actually got right before I got this one. And I've really enjoyed crew wear as a knife steel. It's been one of my favorites, probably my second favorite, maybe behind a K390 um, so far that I've used. It is just very nice for my uses uh, because I know it's never, it's, even though it's not technically a stainless steel, I don't really have to worry about rust. I sometimes see a little bit of rust spotting on my K390, um, but rust is not a big deal to me. Um, these have never rusted on me, so it's really good in that sense. It sharpens up extremely well. Probably my favorite steel that I've ever sharpened. Um, you know, it would only the only thing that make it sharpen it better if it was at is maybe if it was like a knife like this with a super high HRC, very thin behind the edge. Um, but another thing that I love about crew wear is how it strops. Uh, this stuff strops up really good and it's just nice to have a steel that strops up well uh, because, you know, I remember this knife, I used it for probably two weeks straight. Um, just, and I remember using it a lot and then I just completely stropped it back. It felt great. Used it for another couple of weeks and I think I eventually sharpened it cause I wanted it to, but I've had a, a similar experience with this as well. Crew wear is a great seal, super enjoyable to use and sharpen. And I am I think we're seeing it more from Spyderco and just more from companies in general. And that makes me happy um, because let's say Crew Wear replaced all of their, I, I know it's not going to replace all their S30V, but let's say this is a model, which I think it isn't like, this is not like a sprint run, um, but let's say they frequently have these in stock at retailers. That'd be awesome for anyone to just be able to pick up a knife and crew wear anytime they want one, um, just because it's a great steel, really enjoyable to use. But the PM2 on the blade, the things that I dislike about it, one, this is a very small nitpick, is this distal taper on here. Same with the military and the pair three. This is just pretty extreme when you look at it. 
Um, so this is like 140 thousandths at the thickest point right here, which is a pretty thick stock. I would say like your average stock thickness is maybe like 120 thousandths or something like that. I don't even know what the stock thickness is on this. Um, but I'd say 120 thousandths is the average stock thickness. But this at 140 thousandths, that's something that I'd say could pass for a hard use knife if you want to classify stock thicknesses into categories. But then if you look up here at the tip, you have this very thin tip up here. Um, and so it's like almost very beefy and thick back here and then very thin at the tip. So it's like you shouldn't be doing hard use with this, but it is capable for it back here. I don't know. Um, really what I would want is just something like the stretch. This has a distal taper as well. It's just thinner at, its, at the top right here. Sorry, that's not focusing very well. Um, but yeah, I like the stretch spine thickness more than this. Um, and I am fine with that very fine tip up here. I'm not one of those guys who wants like an Emerson A100 tip on all of my knives. Um, I really like that for like utility cuts, usually on like plastics. I feel like that works really well. Um, but honestly, it just is a little extreme for me. I know it's a nitpick, uh, but it's still a thing. Another thing is the thickness behind the edge on the PM2. It is decent. Um, it's about 21 thousandths, if I can remember. Um, yep, there it is. 21 thousandths behind the edge. Um, I know thickness behind the edge is kind of a controversial... It's not really controversial. It shouldn't be controversial, controversial basically. But I really like using knives that are thin behind the edge. I like knives that are 15 thousandths and under. I think that those are the ones that are enjoyable for me to use. So while this is usable and I'm fine with using spider coats, I carry them all the time. Um, I enjoy knives that are thinner behind the edge. Um, but still, 20 thousandths behind the edge. I want to just like say that spider coat is doing a lot better than companies than other companies out there i know my bench made uh mini adamas i sold that it was like 30 thousandths behind the edge um you know some hogs are a little bit beefy behind the edge the ones that don't have that high of a grind like i know the hogue deca is pretty thick behind the edge for how thin the stock is and i just want to give spider co recognition they do grind their knives pretty thin um, I would like to see them thinner, but I understand why they don't go as thin um, because maybe they're scared of like warranty issues with people who aren't using their knives for basic stuff like I do, just like cardboard cutting and processing basic stuff. Um, maybe if they're one uh, scared someone might use their knife for some harder use like impact cutting, they might want to have that extra thickness behind the edge for some more strength to it. Um, but I would like to see it a little bit thinner. But overall, the PM2 blade, it's pretty good. Just minor nitpicks are my complaints, but I'm really happy to see crew wear on it. Let's talk about the fit and finish in this. So the centering on it is really good. The finishing around the edges, I don't really feel any sharp corners right here. It's like knocked down, but this is just a thin piece of micarta. Like, I don't really understand, like... I mentioned earlier they did this so that they can use um, materials that aren't as strong and is still not run the risk of breaking. But don't you think that's a pretty thin piece of micarta? I might measure that. I don't think this measurement is really going to tell me anything. But, so what is that? 54 thousandths, about a 50, yeah, 54 thousandths there what does that even tell me i don't even know i don't really know why i measured that but basically i'm trying to just say that that is thin that is a thin piece of material i don't see the handle breaking there i just wonder if they might have issues with that it just doesn't really make much sense to me that i guess they need that because of the compression lock or i mean i assume that they do um but it's just like that's just an awfully thin piece of micarta i guess i'll just bring that to you guys attention um but it is very nested well in these liners. One thing about this, it just runs smoother than my regular G10 one. It sounds better. Um, I'm not really talking about the action even. It's just like the full metal liners gives it more of like, feels like, you know, like handling a titanium frame lock after, after, you, after you have handled like a knife in G10 or something. It almost feels like that. Um, this does have lock stick.
as you can hear there. I'm trying to work it out. I assume it'll come out over time. It's not bad, um, but yep, that is the thing. I think that you see that sometimes with compression locks. Um, it doesn't really bother me all that much. If it's like a permanent thing, it's like, okay, there may be some geometry issues with the lock face, um, but I think it, it'll probably go out in a couple months. Um, but yeah, fit and finish, I am pretty impressed with it, other than the lock stick and this thin lock bar. I guess that doesn't have to do with fit and finish. Um, but yeah, just interesting. Now let's move on to the ergonomics of this. So with the PM2, this is my main complaint with it is the ergonomics. Um, I just don't find them very comfortable for my hand. My most comfortable spot, usually all my grips back here just aren't that comfortable. Um, I just feel like this back of it digs into my hand. Um, either like that or like that. Up here in a hammer grip, that's probably my most comfortable grip. Um, I also like the pinch grip with it, but it's still kind of blocky. As you can see, there's like very little chamfering on the edges here. If you look at a pair of three, um, there is more chamfering to it, which I think is one reason why I think the pair of three is more comfortable. Um, so that's my complaint that I still have with the PM2 is the ergonomics. I wish they were better. Um, I it's like when they make a change, they, they, it definitely took work and time to make this change with the full metal liners. And so I just kind of wish maybe they could have added some more chamfering on the scales or more contouring, but maybe, um, I know Flightanium did some contoured scales, um, but that I saw some issues with those. So, um, maybe other companies will do some contour scales with this and it'll be easier to machine, I assume, since they are full metal liners but once again you have this area to deal with so i don't know how that's going to be um uh, but yeah the pm2 the ergonomics are really my main complaint with it it's just not as comfortable you know i just did a video comparing it to the stretch and the stretch is super comfortable they look pretty similar in ergonomics but this is more flat back here um and i think that's really what makes the main difference also it's not as much of a ramp to it with that thumb thumb ramp there um, but that is still, my thoughts still stand the same with the PM2. It's just, it's just okay when it comes to ergonomics. And it's really just, I feel like when I think about spider coats, it's just okay. It's just like in the middle of my list. Um, I'm not, it's not my favorite, um, but it is a solid knife. Um, I don't think it's their best knife in my opinion. Now let's talk about the carry of it. The carry, it's good. I mean, pocket clip works well from the factory. A lot of people like to switch these out. I don't think it's necessary. I've never felt the need to. Um, pretty lightweight, feels good. That's all I gotta say about carry. Um, for the action of it, um, I said it was pretty smooth. It is the PM2, um, you know, compression lock, fun to play with if you like doing that. It doesn't make or break a knife for me, the action, um, but it is good. It's nice to open and close one-handed. That's something I like and it's really easy to do. Um, so yep, the action is good. Um, the value, I think this is, I for, honestly forget how much this was. Um, I'm going to guess like 200. I think that's about where it was. Please correct me if I'm wrong. I think these are coming back in stock in places too. I think I saw them at Indiana Knives last, um, but that is pretty good. I'm, I think the basic like S30, S45 VN ones are like 160, 170 or something. Um, so yeah, the value on this is, it's pretty good. Um, the PM2, it's spider codes are going up there in price, but so is everything. So I'm the value. It's worth it to me. I have never even thought, oh, is this knife worth my money after I bought it? I've just been happy with it. Um, so I guess that's my answer for the value, but my wrap up thoughts with my re review on the PM2, um, probably since I reviewed it last, I like it more. Um, than I did. I know I've come down really hard on the PM2 before. I think that was partially me um, just kind of wanting to be different from other YouTubers. That's something you see a lot. Like there'll be a popular knife, for example, the Sabenza, and people just like completely trash it, like say it's just garbage. And um, I just, I don't see how people see that. Um, and I think it's just because there's so many people like me who say how good the Sabenza is say it's their favorite knife and all that and people just want to be different because videos that are more controversial they get more views it's just how it is negative videos do better um so i have come down hard on the pm2 in the past um i'd say it's upgraded from 
I had it like 10th on my list for top 10 spider coast. Maybe it's in that six or seven spot now. Um, but yeah, it's still like, it's not the, the stretch. I'm picking the stretch over it. As you saw from my video, I'm picking the Manix over it, the Gale Bradley two over it, pair of three over it, military over it. Um, but still the PM two is just a good all around average knife. Like, if someone wants a Spyderco, I'd recommend the PM2 if they like how it looks. Um, I guess that's my final thoughts on it. I'm excited to see what more is to come with these handle materials. Um, with this as a normal production knife, hopefully it's not one of those where Spyderco is like, all right, once a year we're going to put these out because then it's pretty much a sprint run. Um, I've also been seeing these on the secondary. I saw one today for like $170. Um, I saw it just when it posted, though, so it probably sold probably an hour or two after that um but if you're looking for one of these on the secondary they're not that hard to find and they're not inflated at all one thing that i've been seeing with the trends i guess is sprint runs are kind of um not as popular as everyone thinks they is as everyone thinks they are um if it's like a shaman or something then it's gonna be pretty expensive uh, but there's just so many pm2s I think it shows that people are sick of these sprint runs. They're not going to, why am I going to buy? Uh, I saw one in L max and it did have the marble carbon fiber handle scales, which was different. Um, so, but I, it's just like, you'll see one in just like some weird shade of green and it'll be in like 204 P or just some steel like that, or like XHP, like cutlery shop, something like that. And it's like, why is somebody going to buy that? Um, over or why is some why is that going to be inflated in the sales compared to other knives and so i think sprint runs are kind of dying out just because you know the market controls itself i guess beauty of capitalism um and so i'm glad because you don't have the rants of people anymore talking about how bad flippers are um, and getting all upset because someone um, bought something with their own money and sold it to somebody else for a price that they both agreed on yeah, maybe it's time for another sprint run video. Those are always fun to make because I make the same argument every single time. And people are like, no, we should not allow people to. I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. I It's been a while since I've done a video. Actually, it's only been like a week, but I'm still getting into it again. I do enjoy making these, just kind of talking. So yeah, we're 17 minutes in. I'm going to end it right here. If you've stuck around this long, thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one.